What's up guys? It's your girl, Natalie. Today we are at Clearwater Beach. As you can tell, as you can tell, as you can tell. I feel like I say that a lot in my videos. But today we're going to talk about Q&A and most questions I'm asked or assumptions about me. So let's get into it. A little disclaimer about this video is the questions I'm asked and the assumptions about me. I'm not targeting anyone in particular. These are just little bits that I feel like I need to shine some light on about my life since you guys are following me around. But I am in no way, shape or form trying to target anybody or make fun of anybody. So with that being said, let's get into it. If you like the video, uh, Let's hit the thumbs up now. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And leave comments in the comment section below if you have any more questions or if you have any topics about something else I should do a video on. So, let's get into it. I'm trying to show you guys the scenery and, and vlog. So, I'm trying to give you guys 10 out of 10. You feel me, bruh. So, let's get into it. Guys, I was gonna do like five and five or ten and ten, meaning assumptions slash Q and A. But I'm pretty sure I have ADHD and I wouldn't be able to keep up. So that being said, this is in not any order in particular. I'm just gonna hop around and do um, whatever DMs for in my Instagram DM. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Um, the Q and A's also are in assumptions, like I said, are not in any particular order. So, um, yeah, definitely check, check me out to show you guys a little bit of my personality and more into my life, what these questions are and assumptions. So that being started, that being said, let's get started. First question I got is why is my channel called the fabulous life of Natalie? Well, I think my life's pretty fabulous. Um, I ate today, I slept last night, I worked the day before. Um, so I don't know, I think it's different people's mindset of what um, people think is fabulous and whatnot. But to me, my life is fabulous. Like I said, I ate, I slept, I work, have a roof over my head. So to me, that makes my life pretty fabulous. Second question I got is, what made me decide to start a YouTube channel. And I would say what made me decide to start a channel is that I feel like my personality is different and unique. I feel like I'll leave a lasting impression on people. I feel like you can't say, you remind me of somebody I know, Natalie. So that being said, I decided to blossom and spread my personality throughout so people all can see my personality. So that's one reason why I started a YouTube channel. All right, this is another Q&A. Keep in mind, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can definitely ask me questions there and I will definitely post them here. Uh, what was the weirdest dream I've ever had? I don't know if this is the weirdest dream I've ever had, but this is definitely one of the weirdest dreams I've had. Um, actually, it happened a couple weeks ago. I'm a huge Nicki Minaj fan and I went and got sushi and I had this dream I met Nicki Minaj and what's crazy is that she was the biggest bitch and it's crazy because I really really like her I really like her lyrics uh, I like her her style and everything about her but in the dream I don't know where I was it was like a club atmosphere she was with somebody I don't know if the lady she was with is famous or not but Nikki was probably or basically like why are you here Natalie like 
Like I didn't deserve to be there. And I guess she was kind of like, you know, making fun of the way I was dressed. So that is probably one of the, the weirdest dreams I've had. And that's what comes to my mind immediately when I think of, okay, this is pretty weird. And then when I woke up, I didn't even immediately realize it. I remember like going to work, getting in my car and playing a Nikki song. And I was like, dang, I did really have a dream about Nicki Minaj last night, didn't I? So yeah, one of the toughest, top weirdest dreams. All right, here we go with an assumption. An assumption is that someone, I don't know if this is for everybody, but I had a lady I worked with. It's gonna be story time. I'll try to make it fast because sometimes I linger on my stories. But I had a lady I worked with, thought I was gay, and um, no matter what, let me start off with an assumption and then I'll dabble into the story. So I had a lady I worked with who thought that I was, and um, and that's cool, you know, even though I posted my husband, and even though he won't post his face, but, and I'm pretty sure that makes me look more super sus, but she assumed that I was, I told her I wasn't, but it really in return turned out to she had a crush on me, and I guess she wanted me to be that's gonna be a whole different story for a different day but make sure you guys stay tuned for that but no I am not but that is an assumption and I think her exact words were everybody thinks I am or everybody I worked with rich I really don't care because I'm not no disrespect but that's not who I am I try to keep it honest and real as possible but no that's a that's not who I am Next question is, what's my favorite season? My favorite season is, ooh, it looks like I'm getting a little blurry right there. My favorite season is summer. My birthday's in summer. These people behind me are, are staring. Golly, I was gonna try to show y'all, but maybe after I clear this up on this answer, I'll zoom in and show you guys to see what I'm going through at the moment. Favorite season, summer. I like summer because beaches clearly um it's warm i know i've talked about this before but obviously i moved from kentucky to florida i'm not really a winter person on a good day i drive out of 10 <laughs> i drive like a 3.5 a 4 so if you incorporate you know it snows in kentucky it it, it sleets in kentucky if you incorporate that weather i'm probably about a one things get a little dangerous so that being said uh, my favorite season is summer my birthday is in the summer I seen a survey that said that based on when your birthday is what season that's what season people typically go for you guys let me know down in the comments if that's true or not next question is what is my biggest fear believe it or not my biggest fear is water and what's crazy is I'll say that I can't swim or don't know how to swim because like I just said, I'm a Leo, fire sign, and therefore I shouldn't be in the water. That's how I feel. It might not be true. It might have something to do with, you know, in the fourth grade, I almost drowned. And what's so crazy is before we moved down here to Florida, um, my husband took me on his kayak and you'll see in this video coming up, you'll see in this video coming up how I don't like water in the kayak. I don't know, I tried to like balance the, the kayak out and I guess you're not supposed to do that. When it moved, I went against the move to make it balance out. It made sense in my head, but allegedly you're not supposed to do that. But in this video, my kids also say I'm, I'm standing up, I'm sitting up at a 90 degree angle my hand grasping onto the kayak I just don't do water but the thing is I am trying to get water I eventually will take swimming lessons and I'll post it so you guys stay tuned for that I believe you have to face your fears but I am level 10 scared of water like I'm at the beach I'll get in the water but I won't go too far um, it's it's sad dude I think me almost drowning like kind of scarred me but like I said I will definitely um, be posting swimming lessons.
right, the next thing is an exemption. I've heard this before more than one time, but an exemption I've heard is that I think I'm all that or I think I'm too good. And I don't, I don't think that's true. Uh, I'm gonna use this swimming lesson that I just said as an example. It might not be the best scenario, but I feel like if there's something that I do and I'm not automatically good at it, I'll take the time to master it to be good at it. And that being said, like once, like for an example, once I start swimming or learning how to swim, I'll try to master how to swim good. And I'll be like, okay, I'm the best. I'm the best at doing it because, um, you know, I started not being good at something then I ultimately became good at it. But some people take that as, I guess, cockiness. I don't really consider it as cockiness or bragging. Like I said, I consider it as I'm taking something, I'm twisting it to the point where I'm good at it and I become really good at it. And the way that I would say that I become good at it is by, um, for example, like, okay, I'm CFS, I can swim this lap. And then I go against someone who can swim, who's been swimming longer, and then I, I beat that person at doing that. And I guess me bragging or me saying, hey, I used to suck and now I'm good, it's considered like cockiness, like I said. But I see it as, um, I used to suck and now I'm good. But like I said, a lot of people can get it, but I feel like there's a mindset that goes into that as well, like, to be able to motivate yourself like hey i used to suck but i'm gonna get better watch me get better and then get better i feel like not everybody has that mindset so to actually do that and say those words and actually have the performance to show that you're good at doing it that's not cockiness to me in my opinion this is another assumption like i said they're not in the order in case you couldn't tell especially assumption assumption back to back but someone said that I speak really clear or I speak really well. I'm very optimistic. Um, that just kind of touched my heart because I feel like I try to stay positive no matter what. So that being said, I do try to stay positive no matter what, no matter what the situation is. I try to be optimistic and just not, I feel like if you put this negative thought in your head about something, um, you're gonna choose to always think about that. So I feel like if you change the scenery and go positive, then obviously you'll have a, a positive reaction and you'll you'll think whatever it is that comes to your mind. So I appreciate that. All right guys, I'm back. I went inside this care shop and bought a necklace and a water. I'd be so thirsty down here. It's ridiculous. But the next question is, what is the wildest thing I've ever done? All right, the wildest thing I've ever done was Jerry Springer was on and popping I went on the show and a lot of people may not believe me because I honestly don't have the footage to show but I'm continuing to look for it I'm continuing to look for the footage and once I have it I'll definitely post it but the name of the show or the concept of the show was like my boyfriend at the time was cheating on me and with my friend and they wanted us to be together at the end of the show so it's not like i left him the next question people may have is is the show real and i'm not going to say yes or no because i feel like it's not my business to tell but if you guys want a video another video about it i may update the video and tell you um this happened when the show was in chicago if some people are going to look for it um yeah, it happened when the show was on Chicago. They flew us out, they put us in a hotel, and they really want to make sure, I guess, you don't get on stage and freeze up. So they'll randomly come in your room and says, well, if your co-star says this, what are you going to say? If this happens, what are you going to do? Blah, 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 blah. They honestly make sure you're 100% ready and you don't freeze up on the show. But definitely that is one of the wildest things I've ever done. And what makes it kind of wild also is that I didn't call, I didn't call 1-800 Jerry Springer to be on the show. What happened was when I was managing at McDonald's, I've talked about this in previous videos, they called the phone and was like, at the store, and was like, did someone just um, call Jerry Springer? 
and I'm like no but I mean customers at that point in time always ask to use the phone not saying that they didn't call them but then they were like well do you want to be on the show do you want to be a contestant and I had to get together a plan and some people and we went on the show so like I said if you want to know more about it leave a comment below I'll definitely um, post another video update um, the ins and outs of what happened this big sign says danger no jumping or diving I wonder if people like literally jump off of this though you know obviously I'm not about that life because I don't swim but I am wondering if it ever happens last question I have is what is something that either your mom or your dad don't understand about you and I feel like you guys are getting all of the tea today so tea time um, one of the things that I feel like my mom doesn't understand and will never understand is when COVID first came out, I got on OnlyFans explicitly, explicitly on OnlyFans and I worked up my clientele. Um, I feel like with me, I've always been like hustler mindset and I'll get in the money, but I feel like she doesn't understand that. Okay. At this time. My husband had went to visit at Cuba. My husband's Cuban. He had got locked down in the country for a year. And I, as a mother of two, had to financially support my kids and all bills, including a car payment, a house note. And I don't know how she found out. I'm pretty sure she found out because I was advertising on Facebook. I had went to my story and before I posted the story, I had blocked a lot of people. So I guess someone had gotten through the cracks of, of finding out um, that I had this page. She came over to my house with my older brother like it was an intervention and was like, if I needed money, I should have came to her. But the thing is, no one is gonna take care of me and all my bills, right? And also during that time, my car had broke down. So I had to obviously think of something to do. I couldn't, I didn't have the time to work two full-time jobs, obviously. I spoke about in other videos how I work 10 hour, 11 hour shifts. So I just felt like she never understood exactly what I was trying to do or wanted to understood. And she just said I should have came to her and she would have helped me. But like I said, no one's gonna take care of a grown woman, her bills and her kids. So that's why I did it. And obviously I had to quit because she came over like it was a, an intervention and was like, what am I doing? I'm wrong. I'm going places for not, not doing the right thing. But I don't know. I just feel like at that time I was making pretty good money from it. I was making $400 a week and it helped me financially to support what I was doing. And I stopped because it was a big deal but before I stop, you can block out certain states down there. So I wind up blocking out the states before stopping. But yeah, she'll never understand why I did it. And I may look 100% wrong with her eyes for doing what I did. But I feel like at that time, it was the best thing to do. And I don't have any regrets for doing it. Because I feel like when people are pinned against the wall, they have to do what they need to do in order to support who they need to support. So I don't feel wrong for doing that. Guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for staying in tune. Please uh, look for more content in the future. If you haven't already liked and subscribed and hit the notification button for when I drop videos, go ahead and do that right now. And until next time, I'll